Today is the 29th of August, and this day in Baptist history, our reading is with Doe from Pillsbury. Our passage of scripture is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Though the Baptist constituency in America has been composed primarily of the middle class, we rejoice that our history is not bereft of some Baptist philanthropists who have lavishly supported our educational and missionary causes. Such a man was George Pillsbury, who was born on August 29, 1816 in Sutton, New Hampshire. Following his completion of the standard pre-college training at age 18, young Mr. Pillsbury moved to Boston, where he worked in the grocery business. Following that year of experience, Mr. Pillsbury returned to his hometown and labored for several years for a manufacturing business. Apparently, he learned to manage finances well, and in 1840, at the age of 24, he began to work as a clerk in a mercantile business. Six months later, he purchased the company. The following year, George Pillsbury married Miss Margaret Sprague Carleton. To that union, three children were born, one of whom died in infancy. In 1849, Mr. and Mrs. Pillsbury moved to Warner, New Hampshire, and there Mr. Pillsbury served as selectman and treasurer. In the 1850-51 term, Mr. Pillsbury was a member of the state legislature. In 1851, the Pillsburys moved to Concord, New Hampshire, where for the next 24 years, Mr. Pillsbury was employed as purchasing agent for the Concord Railway. During that time, he also served as one of the organizers and directors of the First National Bank of Concord and was elected president of the bank in 1866. His political career continued. Mr. Pillsbury served in the state legislature again in the 1871-72 term and then as mayor of the city of Concord in 1876 and 1877. During those years in Concord, the Pillsbury were generous supporters of the First Baptist Church and George was trustee of the state orphanage and the Centennial Home of the Aged. At the age of 62 in 1878, when many might begin to consider retirement, Mr. and Mrs. Pillsbury, Pillsbury moved westward to Minnesota, where George Pillsbury labored in the management of the Charles A. Pillsbury Flower Company. Along with his labor, the man of God also served his community as president of the city council, the board of trade, and the chamber of commerce, and trustee of several financial institutions. In 1884, Mr. Pillsbury was elected mayor of the city of Minneapolis. But with all of his other activities, Mr. Pillsbury found time to serve as president of the Minnesota Baptist Convention from 1880 to 1887. He was also elected as president of the American Baptist Missionary Union and filled that position with great love for the cause of Baptist world missions. His interest in training young Baptist leadership became very evident when he began underwriting the Minnesota Academy. He had become aware of the tremendous financial needs as he served as the president of the state convention, and he began by offering a $20,000 donation for a girl's dorm provided that the state Baptist raised $25,000. This was accomplished in 1886. The new building was named for the benefactor and thus Pillsbury Hall became a reality. This was but the first of many contributions that the man of God would make. He built a new academy building, gave $25,000 toward the endowment fund, and from 1889 until his death, actually paid for the current expenses of the school. As a tribute to Mr. Pillsbury in 1887, the name of the academy was changed to the Pillsbury Academy, and a provision was made to have the position of trustees at the academy filled by vote of the Minnesota Baptist Convention. Mr. Pillsbury died on July 17, 1898, and his will contained another $250,000 for the endowment fund of the school. One obituary writer of Mr. Pillsbury wrote, and I quote, He acquired wealth that it might be used for the glory of God and the good of humanity. End of quote. The great fundamentalist, Dr. W. B. Riley, was Mr. Pillsbury's pastor at the time of his death and conducted the funeral. Tragically, in the years that followed, the Academy imbibed the leaven of liberalism as the Minnesota Baptist Convention became closely aligned with the Northern Baptist Convention. 
A rare occurrence transpired in 1948 when the fundamentalists within the Minnesota Baptist Convention gained sufficient strength in that organization to sever all ties with the Northern Baptist Convention. Individual churches had been leaving the National Convention because of its liberalism, but it was unheard of for an entire state convention to do so. The fundamentalists in the state, however, still faced a tough battle when they sought to take control of the academy campus. For liberals went to court to block their takeover of the facilities. But in time, the legal hurdles were cleared and the fundamentalists were declared to be the legal custodians of the campus. The fundamentalist leadership voted to transform Pillsbury Academy into a Bible college and the new school opened its doors in September of 1957 as the Pillsbury Baptist Bible College. Dr. Richard B. Clearwaters was elected the first president of the college. For years, Pillsbury has had a decided ministry in supplying Bible-believing fundamentalist Baptist pastors for churches in the entire Midwest and missionaries for service around the world. The fundamentalist bastion of truth became permeated with evangelistic fire during the tenure of the presidency of Dr. Monroe Parker from 1958 to 1965. Dr. Parker's love of evangelism and missions was instilled in many young men who carried his burden for souls. How we thank God for the few, uh, the few Bible-believing philanthropists that have so aided the cause of Bible-believing Baptists throughout the years. Let us pray that God will raise up a host of businessmen who will see the need of assisting in training and sending missionaries around the world in this day. To God be the glory.